Welcome back to CardioTube TV at CRT 2020. I'm Dr. Mark Turco. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer uh, for the Penn Center for Innovation at the University of Pennsylvania, and I'm delighted to be here. Um, we've had a lot of discussion today at CRT 2020 around the cath labs of the future and future innovation within the cath labs, and I'm delighted uh, today to uh, have a special guest who is working specifically in an area um, that combines some of the newer digital mo uh, modalities with some of our hemodynamic assessments, which are obviously critically important as we move forward uh, uh, with patient care. Um, so I'm, I want to have uh, Hans uh, Kaufman introduce himself, and uh, then we'll uh, begin to discuss this, uh, this area. Hans? Hi, so I'm uh, Ed Kaufman from uh, Soroka University uh, Medical Center back in Israel, uh, and I'm uh, the Chief Medical Officer for MedHub AI. It's a startup company that works uh, uh, on getting FFR uh, based on artificial intelligence on the angios that each of us take uh, in the cat lab. Excellent. Well, this is a, a, a burgeoning space and an important space. and. You know, as you think of using artificial intelligence algorithms connected with FFR technologies, are we trying to use those algorithms to basically help um, look at the appropriateness of PCI, or are we using it more to really um, look at the optimal physiology within the vessel? because I think there is a little bit of a difference there. Definitely, definitely. I think if you look at the, at the uh, analysis that were made based on the FAME uh, uh, trials, you can see that 30% of the PCI are inappropriate with a large uh, cost burden on the health system. It gets up to, I think, uh, 4 billion. So there is an issue of appropriateness criteria and uh, of course this is uh, the main thing that we are focused on right now. That uh, doesn't mean that we are not uh, trying to get the uh, physiological uh, assessment of each vessel. Uh, so for example, we know that once we get a PCI, once we treat a lesion, and we have an FFR that is above 0.9, we know that the MACE rate will be low while if we have a, uh, an FFR value post-PCI below that or towards 0.85, then the MACE rate will be higher. So this is, of course, another thing that interests us, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to implement it in, in our versions of the, of the uh, software. So in Israel, this technology has been uh, studied, and, and your teams have done a great job. How has it been perceived by the clinicians themselves and the, the teams within the cath lab? Um, you know, as you know, we brought a lot of digital technologies to the marketplace and, and are currently available. Uptake is sometimes slow. So tell us a little bit about how this is perceived as a technology. Yeah, so um, we, uh, as I, we, I mentioned, we, we are, uh, we finished our uh, regulatory uh, study for the Israeli regulatory system, so we're going to market the, the software soon. But from the uh, initial uh, reviews that we get from hospitals, they are very excited about it, especially since it's fully integrated in the workflow of the cat lab. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stop. You don't have to... Uh, mark the vessel uh, or anything. It gives you an automated stenosis detection and an FFR value for even for stenosis that you didn't even think sure. that are important. So it can actually help you uh, detect stenosis that you didn't think should be treated. Yeah. Uh, also, it, you don't have to take any specific um, views that you don't usually take. So you do your normal angio as you always do, and it, it it's interprets the picture online. Sure. So that is one of the, I think, main advantages that we have with this technology uh, over other uh, technologies yep. that, are, that exist in the field. So there's a big difference between 
diagnostic technologies and then technologies that ultimately drive therapeutic approaches. Um, and obviously technologies that drive a therapeutic approach, we worry about the accuracy. So tell us a little bit about um, you know, the accuracy of these algorithms compared to what we would normally uh, do with uh, any FFR case that, that currently is being done. So, um, based on, on data that we have that was published before, we know that some of the FFR studies are uninterpretable. Uh, can get to 30%. Now, the accuracy of, of this uh, technology uh, and its correlation with the pressure wire based FFR uh, was around 90%. Uh, and we started off with around 85 and we're growing uh, with, uh, with each version that we have. And the more data you get, this is one of the, of the benefits and the advantages of the artificial intelligence as since as we have more and more data, the accuracy gets better. So we expect it to reach higher levels very soon. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And if you think back to some of the earlier studies that in this particular area, comparing algorithms versus humans, um, you know, I guess there were three areas that um, were evaluated. One, the subjectivity of the analysis, especially if we're speaking about human beings, um, where algorithms are a little more absolute. Um, the misclassification um, and then uh, the reproducibility uh, quotient between humans and algorithms. Can you speak a little bit about to your technology and, and your experience in this area? Yeah, definitely. I think that uh, well, in my practice, uh, we have, uh, I come from a big hospital and we do a lot of uh, uh, procedures and there's almost every day that we find a case that we argue whether this LED is, a, is significant or not, and we should do FFR or not, or, and, you know, we, we are struggling with this question each day, sometimes several times a day. Um, with what I've seen with the, the, the software that we have, it's very, very, um, uh, reproducible in terms that it gets you pretty much to the same answer each time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can run it once, you can run it 10 times, 100 times, you'll get pretty much the same answer. Uh, it's very good at, at stenosis detection. We get something like 96% uh, of all stenosis uh, below 0.9 and 100% of stenosis is of 0.8 and below. Excellent. So we get each, every stenosis is detected if it's significant. Yeah. Um, now we do hope that to get to a higher accuracy because uh, our, our uh, sensitivity is, is pretty high but our specificity is 100% since we yeah. detect all the, neg all the positive uh, FFRs. So um, I think it has a, a, an important role yeah. to help uh, physicians and operators uh, reach the, the correct decision for each uh, patient, especially if we're talking about bypass or not with sure. LAD and uh, etc. So it's we've seen all we've all seen cases that we thought sending a patient to a bypass, the patient refused, we do a PCI, we put a wire down the LAD and the FFR is negative. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's important. So we only have about a minute left, so um, I wonder if you could just share with the audience um, you know, where you are with the technology from the standpoint of timelines and regulatory approaches and, and where you're uh, looking to, obviously you're starting in Israel, but I believe you're looking to come to Europe and then to, to the United States. And so we're about to start marketing in Israel uh, in the next uh, month or so. And we're gonna, uh, in parallel, we're gonna start a CE mark uh, study, hopefully to have the result by summer uh, and uh, start in the summer an FDA, uh, an FDA trial, prospective trial to get an FDA uh, approval uh, and 
hopefully we'll have uh, great results. That's great. Dr. Hans Keifman, thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, thank you for joining us today uh, at CardioTube uh, at CRT 2020.